Um, I just want to ask, uh, because the minister said that the election is a point of inflection for change, and um, Professor Teo uh, rightly pointed out that the independence of a candidate is actually uh, vital, and I think most Singaporeans coming to the presidential election would also see it as that. My question is, if everything is behind closed doors, and if the president decides to stand for re-election, on what basis do Singaporeans have an informed basis to make the decision to re-elect, not re-elect? Thank you. Okay, right. Um, okay, you, you answer. Vincent, Vincent, okay. Vincent, quickly, <coughs> please. Yeah. My name is Vincent Chan. Two quick points. One is that today we have five prospective candidates uh, for the presidency. And in future elections, there might even be more. What happens if the winning uh, or the candidate with the highest number of votes only garners, say, 22 or 25 percent of the votes? Matter, right? Should we begin to think matter. of a runoff for the leading two candidates so that the, mm, the winning, the, the one that's elected, okay. at least has the moral authority All right. to Thank be you. elected by most yeah. of the um, Vin- candidates? Yes. Thank you, Vincent. And, and secondly is, we say that the president uh, holds a very important ceremonial uh, role going to represent Singapore in other countries, etc. Th- this is the only office where the wife's picture is also presented in all the buildings in Singapore, <laughs> government buildings, etc. We have no idea, except maybe uh, apart from Mrs. Uh, Tony Tan, we have no idea what the other wives even look like and how they might, <laughs> they might present and represent us uh, at state dinners and no, it's, ceremonies. No, it's, 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 not, it's not true, no? The newspapers have been uh, publicizing <clears throat> the photos of all the wives. By the way, under our constitution, under our constitution, there's no such office as the office of the first lady, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we got, we got actually three questions. So, Lian, Lian, you you answer the first one, and Chan, you answer the the two. Uh, The the first one is relatively easy because the constitution actually has a provision. The question was, um, if someone wants to stand for election, how do Singaporeans Singaporeans make an informed choice? Uh, Let's say that the the president uh, uh, had to say uh, okay to a very extensive drawdown on public reserves. He actually has to give reasons which have to be gazetted. So there's actually public knowledge. So there is a pool of knowledge if you know how to find a gazette concerning how a president uh, makes his decisions. Of course, the, if the president has a media conference as well, you can mm-hmm. also uh, do a search yeah. to see his thinking process. As um, President Nathan gave a fairly extensive interview concerning the 2009 drawdown. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I may add to that, you see, on that question, I mean, it touches on something that is a constant refrain in many other issues. It keeps coming up because in any particular issue, we look at it and we say, oh, this is less than perfect. Yes, it's less than perfect that you don't know exactly what the Prime Minister and President have been discussing over the last six years. But what is the alternative? The alternative is to publish all their discussions. Do you think that's feasible? So you see, we've got to stop looking for the perfect solution. We've got to take the best available solution and then make a choice with that. There are risks in those choices. The question on uh, whether a President who gets 20, 30 percent will have the moral authority the U.S. president, where voting is not compulsory, I think roughly less than 50% of the people vote sometimes, and the president gets elected on the basis of the voting of 22 23% of the people, and he becomes the most powerful man in the world. So, you know, that's the first-past-the-post system. I guess Vincent's point is that <clears throat> um, if there are more than two candidates um, whether we should follow the system which is um, in place in other countries, that the third and fourth will be eliminated in the first round, and then you have a runoff between the first and second candidate. I guess the, the logic is that you want the winner to have a very substantial mandate from the electorate, and that this would empower him or her with a moral authority. I think this is Vincent's point, right? Um, I don't have the political authority to answer that question, (laughs) whether we can change the system. So I I just want to um, thank all of you very much for coming. I hope that um, the three of us have succeeded in um, 
helping everybody to understand better what the roles, the functions, the powers of the president are, um, what the grey areas are, and, and, and help you to judge wisely on the 17th of August. Thank you for coming.